What's up, everybody? Welcome to System Crafters Live. I'm David Wilson, and we're back again today with another live stream where we get together as a community and talk about whatever topic I've come up with for the day, and this week is no different. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say hello to the people who are here so far in the chat. That would be MH Void, uh, uh, Big Edie, Hyder, Buster Brown, Eric. Nice to see you all. Thanks so much for being here today. Uh, it's a little bit weird. Well, two, re two reasons why it's a little bit weird. One is that I'm super late scheduling the stream, so probably people don't know about it yet. Um, that's my fault. <laughs> I was basically like trying to figure out what I wanted to do for the stream the whole day. And uh, and this is the uh, the topic that you get. So we'll, we'll see how it goes. Uh, the other thing is that uh, there has been a time change for daylight savings time. Is that what it is now in the, in the United States uh, last week? And I'm still on the old time zone. When I say old, I mean non daylight savings time because I'm in Europe. So there's a little bit of a difference in uh, Time signatures, time, time signatures? I'm thinking of music now. Uh, time zones. So uh, maybe it's time shifted for you if you're in the you know, United States. I might be a little like an hour late or something. Anyway, I'm trying to get my brain together today. So uh, just, you know, say a prayer for me and let's see you know, how well I'm able to communicate. Uh, hello also to uh, Masood and Jeff, Emily, Daniel, Ashraz. Nice to see you all. How's the volume level? So, sounds a little bit low to me, but maybe it's just on my side. Hello to Marcel. Ashpras says, somewhat AFK this time, going to be a digital nomad for the next few months and need to prepare the bike. So you're just going to ride your bike around Europe and uh, and try to work? Is that what's going to happen? Sounds like fun. Hello, it you, ACDW. Awesome. Thanks uh, to all of you who are commenting on the volume. Appreciate that. Hello to Tim. And uh, I think I said hello to Jeff, right? Yeah. So, uh, first piece of news today, or I guess suppose the only piece of news, unless someone tells me otherwise, is uh, we likely won't have a stream next week. Uh, I guess that's going to be March 24th, if I'm doing the date math right. I'll probably be out of town, so I just won't be streaming. So, uh, if you don't see me, that's probably why. But I'll probably make a post on the YouTube channel about it uh, whenever the time comes. Hello to Daigo. Uh, MH Voice says, I didn't know about the time change until I saw a mysterious incongruity between my phone and the bedside clock time. Yes. And it's not a good thing to, to learn about that at the last minute before you have to be somewhere. Hello to Thokal. So, today is a kind of a lazy stream. Uh, lazy because I literally just pulled it out of my posterior in the last moment. And also in the sense that we're just going to have a nice relaxing time. I'm trying to look for... Emacs packages that maybe we haven't heard about. You know, we're just going to kind of cruise around, maybe look at Emacs news, uh, take a look at the uh, non GNU ELPA repository because I haven't done a scan over what packages that have been added there for a while now. So we'll take a look at that and just see if there's anything there that seems interesting that might be worth trying. And uh, also, if anybody here has uh, suggestions for packages that maybe are fa fairly new that I haven't heard of yet, I'm certainly uh, interested to try those. Um, and uh, we'll just uh, kind of give that a shot and see uh, how how it goes. Because, you know, there's always new stuff to try, I think. Because, you know, Emacs is a very customizable editor and people will think of new ideas all the time for things to do to extend it. So it's great. Uh, Kay says, I'm chatting from my phone, bridged to Twitch IRC via Bboomy over an XMPP connection, which is further bridged to YouTube by Restream Bot. Yes, it's too many, too many jumps, but still by the magic of technology, I can see that what you're saying. And uh, we're, we're all uh, richer for it, case. Let's see. Uh, let me let me actually write down some of the things that are being suggested at the moment. Uh, uh, Big Edie says, Beacon, uh, Olivetti. Uh, also, Prot has another one that's similar to Olivetti, I think. Uh, 
uh, what else? Uh, rainbow mode, rain de rainbow delimiters. Yeah, rainbow mode. I think I talked about that a while back on uh, one of the theming streams. And Kay says, someone on Emacs was asking about an i3-like window management workflow. Hmm. Don't know if that's possible in Emacs unless someone wrote a package for it. I know that uh, that Pavel has done an integration between Emacs and i3 at some point. Uh, Daniel says, have you looked at anything at Meow? I've heard it mentioned to be a bit less invasive alternative to uh, it's evil. Uh, well, we, we can take a look at it for a second. I, I don't... I've looked at something like it recently, but I don't know if it was that one. So maybe we can take a look at it. Uh, Kay says, in my opinion, visual fill column is better than Olivetti. Well, at least for my purposes, yes, it is. Just because all I really need is to just get some space on the side of the uh, org mode buffer and visual fill column does that job perfectly. In fact, we're lo you're looking at it right now. Uh, let's see. Cool, yeah, feel free to continue to uh, drop more suggestions. Uh, B-Frame, that is one that uh, Prot uh, uh, created recently, I believe. And since I'm not using EXWM, we might actually be able to try that, so. Worth worth doing. I, we should probably just check you know, what Prot's been doing recently because he's putting out new packages. Uh, let's see, is there any state charts related package in Emacs? I don't know what that is. Um, oh, I guess a couple more interesting things to mention that I forgot to talk about. Uh, one is uh, if you are interested in supporting open hardware, and by that I mean computing hardware, computers that are designed to be open and uh, they give you all the schematics and everything you need to reproduce it yourself or maybe, you know, at least repair the system yourself, um, you should check out the uh, MNT research Let's see, MNT research. I, I don't know the actual uh, website. Uh, MNTRE.com. So pretty cool uh, group of folks who are working on open hardware platforms, very amenable to the type of software that we use on this channel. Um, it's interesting stuff. Like this uh, MNT reform is basically a laptop that if you flip it over, you can just get to all the internals and replace whatever parts you want. They even sell replacement parts for things like things like this trackball and all the buttons, all the keycaps, everything. So it's a fully sort of expandable and repairable system. Uh, the reason why I wanted to bring it up though is because they just started a crowdfunding campaign for an interesting little device called the MNT Pocket, and I'm trying to see if it's uh, if it's listed here. Is it? Uh, yeah, the MNT Pocket Reform. Now this is the introduction, but let's look at crowd supply. Crowd, wow, I can't, I can't type. Uh, crowd supply, MNT pocket. So this just went up maybe two days ago and they've already funded the project, but it's a pretty cool looking little device. Um, it's pretty niche. I don't know that it will be good for most people, especially considering the, what am I hearing? Oh, okay, the, the computer's playing noise. Um, why is the audio going the wrong place? Anyway, so. Uh, it's, it's kind of like a low power system, so it's not the most powerful computer you ever used, but it's a seven inch screen, uh, very small form factor device. Uh, looks really cool, kind of pricey if you are just wanting to tinker with a, an open hardware device, but I mean, you're basically supporting a small company that is you know kind of creating all their stuff from scratch. So I think it's kind of cool to, to take a look at it if you're interested in small devices like this. I'm very tempted to pull the trigger on one myself, but uh, I haven't uh, been able to muster up the nerve yet. Um, but I don't know, it looks pretty cool. If I end up getting one, I'll definitely talk about it on the channel. But uh, the, the specs are kind of interesting. It's an ARM processor, eight gigs of RAM. Uh, you can put whatever hard drive you want in it. I mean, flash mm, flash memory hard drive, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, it's, it's cool stuff. I don't know, if you're into this kind of thing, definitely check it out. I'll put the, uh, the link in the uh, show notes. Check out. The MNT Pocket Reform. So uh, that's not something that you can buy and have it delivered today. It's something that will be delivered in, in October, I think. But uh, definitely a cool thing to check out. But keep an eye out on this uh, this company. They're, they seem to be making some pretty cool stuff. Oh, and the other thing. I don't know if people heard about it, but uh, Prot is, uh, has an update on his housing situation. That's, am I really going to search that? That's not going to give me anything. Uh, Protisilaus. 
Stavru YouTube. Okay. So uh, he posted a video. Yes, reject all. I don't want that crap. <laughs> Uh, recently, this week, I suppose, basically saying that uh, he still isn't making enough money to uh, deal with his housing situation where he, you know, has basically has to move out of the place he's living. So uh, the, the current plan on record is to, um, well, I'm giving you the link to his YouTube channel. Why is it not updating the URL? Give me the URL. Thank you. Jeez. Anyway, point being, uh, he's he's going to be building a hut, uh, which sounds pretty extreme to me. Um, so if you appreciate the things that Prot has done over time, like, you know, making YouTube videos or making YouTube packages, I definitely recommend uh, sponsoring Prot on, on GitHub. Is that right? Sponsors? No. Sponsor? No. Am I typing this wrong? Protest allows. Okay. Anyway, go sponsor Prot if you want to to support him because you know times are tough and uh, you know he's he's definitely doing a lot of stuff in the Emacs community. So uh, give him a sponsor if you uh, want to help him with his uh, livelihood situation. I think he doesn't you know have a very large livelihood in terms of you know, he, he's a philosopher you know he lives a, a more meager lifestyle which i think is cool uh, i think that's you know sort of so, so that he can focus on the things he wants to do so if you want to support him so that he can continue to do that please uh definitely go in and support him there uh okay let me go back to the chat because i think i've been missing some things here Uh, Nicholas says, I don't know if you've done Org Supergena, but that would be a cool one. Uh, yeah, Org Supergena is hard to show if I don't have a agenda to, to display. And I don't have one active on this computer, I think. So, so support uh, Prot in uh, improving his housing situation. Okay. My, my things aren't working. All right, God mode, safe code says. Um, yeah, I mean, I guess meow versus God mode. We can take a look at that for a moment if we have time. Versus question, 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 because there's more packages like this. Um, there's definitely other ones that I've seen that are kind of in the same vein and were, were cool. People have suggested them on the channel for sure. For sure. Uh, let's see. Ashra says, even with low power, if it has ARM Risk v based and had a long battery life, uh, that would be great, especially for my next few months. Yeah, apparently it only has about a four hour battery life, which is surprising for an ARM based device that's so small. But it just must be like the um, size of the battery or the components that are involved. But the, the nice thing about those M&T devices is that they give you basically the shell, which is kind of thick. But the, the benefit of that is that eventually, as they improve the stuff that's inside of it, like they have new components or be, maybe a bigger battery or a bigger screen or whatever, you can replace those things yourself. So you can buy newer versions of the components from their website and put them in your computer. Sort of like what they do with the uh, framework laptops, but I think the framework the framework is self-repairable, self-upgradable, et cetera, but I think it's got a more specifically modular setup, whereas the MNT devices are like, you just dig in there and take the parts out. So. I don't know. We'll, we'll see how that goes, but uh, let's see. Ashra says, uh, Prot's landlord needs the house for private reasons, which basically allows you to evict the tenant. Yeah, that's a kind of a nasty loophole, but that's definitely something that I expect to see happen in uh, Cyprus or Greece. And the landlord isn't in interested in any increase of rent. Uh, Ashra says, so we, even with more money by coaching, he would have to leave the house. Yes, definitely. I mean, like, it, it's not a situation where Prot will be able to not move out of his current place, but, you know, supporting him at least so that he can have a better standard of living while he tries to figure out his own housing, housing situation is, is useful, I think. Uh, Daigo says, get time machine. Interesting. Haven't heard of that one. And Jeff says, uh, write good mode. I want to write good now. Ah, uh, defenseless EXTR says, hi, I want to offer promotion of your channel. Viewers, followers, views, chat bots, the price is lower than any competitor. Quality is guaranteed to be the best. I, why do I need chat bots? I mean, 
do the chat bots want to come watch Emacs videos? I really don't think so. So, uh, Desync R says show notes gives 404. Yes, they do give a 404 because I wasn't able to. Well, I did commit them, but. The site might not have regenerated. I've got some problems with the whole show notes situation, as you might have seen. So I need to fix that. Yes, the show notes link in my last live stream is dead. Yes, that's because I didn't push them yet. Because that machine doesn't have my GPG keys set up correctly. So I have to like do an extra few steps. Yes, Case, you are a bot. But I love you anyway. Ashra says, I now, now I need to moderate Twitch too. Yeah, apparently uh, we're getting uh, spam on Twitch. This is great. Violet says, I got into Emacs again recently because of you, so thanks. Well, uh, I'm glad to hear that because uh, it's fun. Uh, Raji Nott says, do you know how to add an initial input to find file? Um, to open a file in the current directory? Well, yes. But it requires a little bit of Emacs Lisp. So I think what you can do is something like this in, in a function. Let's, let's just uh, let's do it this way. So defund um, open file in home, let's say. Why is it not? Why is the internet working? Interactive. Let default. Default directory, expand file name, and where is it? Call interactively find file. I don't know if there's a better way to do this, but I think this will work. So let me run this DW find, come on now, open file in home. All right, so that does it for that folder, but let me just change this path just to make it clear that this is working. So I'm gonna change it to the dot files path. I run it again, and now it's, it shows that we're in the, under the dot files path. In fact, you probably want to put a slash on that. Yeah, okay. You've, you probably should put a, a slash on the end or whatever the path is, but that should work. I'll drop that in the... Uh... In fact, um, what can we do? We could do this. What just happened? Sorry, I know that we weren't supposed to be, you know, just messing around here, but dw open file in directory dot file slash. There we go. Okay, so that's just a general function you can use for this purpose. I'll put it in the show notes if I ever get it, uh, you know, uploaded after the stream is over. Uh, Brian says, why the hash before find file? It may not be necessary, but um, it's it's a way to be very clear that you're trying to resolve the, the function named find file. Otherwise, it's, this is just a symbol. So this is the special syntax to say, I'm referring to this function by name. So return the function object. I don't know if call interactively actually needs that. Let's see what it says. Call function. Yeah, so I think it's necessary. I think if you say call interactively, call interactively find file without the hash oh it works okay so maybe it, it figures it out internally anyway uh hider says uh carthink created gptel i don't really use chat gpt but it might be cool oh boy hey fade uh isaac says if we're doing modal editing what about boon i think boon might be the other one i was thinking about so let's just uh voon boon I'm going to put it right here at the end because that's going to be some extra stuff. Um, Masood says, uh, question out of streams topic, but I'm moving from NeoVim to Emacs and I can't decide between vanilla Emacs and Doom Emacs. Just use Doom Emacs to start with. And the reason why I say that is because you probably want um, things to work and you probably want, you know, certain programming languages to have default configurations. So just use Doom Emacs to start with. You can also try out crafted Emacs. Um, but Doom has a lot more stuff set up out of the box, which is sort of the point. So I would say give Doom a shot and see how you like it. And then eventually you'll probably decide on your own to make your own configuration. Ashra says, quote or function are both fine, but function will optimize during byte compilation. Cool. Alrighty. 
So uh, let's see. We've got a, a, a starting list here, but let's go take a look at uh, the other places where I was uh, mentioning before. So uh, Sacha Chua has this Emacs news section of her blog, which is a great resource for any news about um, the goings on in the Emacs community. But there's generally a um, new packages list toward the bottom, I think. Yeah, new packages. So we can just take a look at these from the recent few weeks and just take a look. The Ren programming language, that's cool. That's the language that was being built for the uh, book Crafting Interpreters, I think, which is an excellent book if you like uh, programming language development. Doesn't mention it here, but it must be that. Session Persistent Project Management. Project. That sounds like how we would say it in uh, Mississippi. I got a new project I'm working on. Morrowind theme. You got to see what that looks like. LGR. Uh, that's not the LGR I'm thinking of, but uh, fully featured logging framework. If you want, we can just watch LGR videos the whole time. I think that would be a good use of our time. Robert O'Connor says, I use Spacemax personally. Spacemax is fine for sure. But Doom is kind of like the, the latest and greatest, I think, of, of the fully batteries included uh, things. Create DRID listings from sources. I don't know if that's really useful. Oh, denote menu. We should probably take a look at that because it's related to denote, which is a great package. Deja Fu says, what Linux distro do you use? I use GNU Geeks. I have a few videos on that if you're interested. Uh, Multi-target interface to compile. Huh, okay, that's cool. I use compile a lot. Uh, scope line shows scope info of blocks and buffer at the end of scope. Okay. Org Babel functions for D2. All right. Phantom programming language. Haven't heard of that. Let's check the next set of things. Uh, I don't know what dark man is. Is that like a package manager or something? Just in time spell checking, quantum country theme. Hmm. Where are all these weird programming languages coming from? The WASP programming language. Is that something for WASM or is it just like something else completely unrelated? What's the next set here? Uh, squirrel mode, another programming language mode. Jeez. No clown fiesta theme. Great. Uh, I saw someone post about this one on Mastodon, I think, Magic Stats. That's kind of interesting. Uh, Beframe, this is the one by Prot. We'll take a look at that one for sure. Uh, oh, okay, the GPTAI that uh, Daigo mentioned is the one by Karthink, I think. I believe that um, Gavin uh, had... Gavin Freeborn. I, I totally blanked on Gavin's last name for a minute. Uh, I think Gavin had a video where maybe he either wrote one or used one. So maybe this is the package he was using in that video. All right. Let's see. New packages. Beef mode. <laughs> Major mode for the beef programming language. I, I have to figure out what the, the beef language is all about because that just sounds too good to be true. Simulate user sessions. So if you want someone to program your Emacs for you, I guess. All right, last one, and we'll try something else. Ooh, FFmpeg utils. I believe Karthik wrote that one because he, he told me about it a long time ago. So I'll take a look at it. I don't know what TMSU is. Org habit stats. What is TMSU? All right, we'll close this. I'm just curious what this is because it's completely uh, opaque based on the name. Frustration with the hierarchical nature of file systems. So what do you want it to be flat? Just just uh, only file names, no file paths. That's going to be real fun. Uh, oh, okay, it's, it's tag based. Cool. That's not a bad idea. I'm just being sarcastic just for for our entertainment. M mostly for my entertainment. I just like, you know, saying things that make me laugh. So sorry. Uh, Rajinat says, can you explain the DW slash at the start of the function? Why do you need to name it like that? I don't need to. I just do it because 
a convention in the Emacs community is that if you write your own custom utility function in your Emacs configuration, you typically put some kind of namespace in the front of it. And in my case, DW is my name, David Wilson, DW slash. So that's like my personal function namespace. A lot of people will use MY for my, like just my function. So whatever you want to use there, but you, you will often see naming like that for functions that people write in their own Emacs configuration that are just like utility functions that aren't part of some other package. Gun says Calimera. Well, it's not uh, meta where I'm at now. It's uh, it's uh, Calavradi. But Calavradi to you. All right, let's see. Crux, uh, Arun says. Yeah, Crux is interesting. We might add it to the list. Uh, Big Edie says, check out the Naga theme if you want to feel like a hacker. Well, I mean, I'm, I'm using Emacs all day long to feel like a hacker, so I don't really need an, another reason. But let's try it anyway. Naga theme. And uh, what else? Uh, Crux. I think uh, uh, Bozidar Batsov, uh, Batsov wrote that package. All right. Yes, Case, uh, Case, Case put the explanation for the naming convention in the chat. I see now. Bay says, Emacs Lisp is dynamically scoped, so the available symbols are limited. Conflicts aren't uncommon yet. Okay, so let's get back to the, the check. I'm not going to look at the TMSU thing. But uh, I also want to look at, I mean, we could look at Melpa, but Melpa has way too many packages. So I think if we look at the uh, non-GNU Elpa, we might find some stuff worth looking at. I don't think they have a list of things that have been updated recently, but since there is not a massive amount of packages, we can just scan through it pretty fast, I think. Let's see. Yeah, there's not that many. I'm not going to bother looking at themes. Blow away mode lighters. I mean, how many of these kinds of packages do we need? Ah, oh, keep. Well, I'm not going to say anything bad about that guy. He's, he's a good guy. I'm not going to say anything bad about anybody, but I'm just complaining that another package like this exists. I mean, we, we do have a few already. Hello to Strix. All right. Wait. Where's the listing? Okay. Quote text with a semi box. All right. Take a picture with your camera. Hmm. Corfu pop up on terminal. I'll take a look at that one. I don't, I don't know what that is. Uh, browse documentation in dev help format. Okay. Uh, this emulated terminal thing. We should take a look at that one. That's another one by Akib, if I'm pronouncing his name correctly. But that one looks pretty interesting. It's actually a, a more faithful terminal emulation, terminal emulator experience in eShell. So if it works well, it might be pretty useful. I shouldn't grab too many things, obviously. Gary says, are you talking about Crux, the Linux distro? Probably not. Someone just said Crux in the chat, and I'm guessing they're talking about the Crux package, but it's possible. Safecode says, can I install anything with Geeks? No, you can't uh, install anything with Geeks. Geeks uh, has some limitations in what packages are available by default. Now, you can put additional channels of... of a channel is like a, a repository of software that you can install. You can put any number of extra repositories, but then someone would have to package the software you're interested in before you would get access to it. Uh, Medi says, do you use a keyboard, keyboard with a Greek layout? Well, I mean, I can switch to Greek layout. Well, maybe not right now because I, I didn't set it up in Sway, but um, no, I, I just have a US keyboard. Let's see, FLX. Focus. Dim the font color of text and surrounding regions. I think we must have looked at that one at some point in the past. Edit get commit messages. I don't know why there needs to be a package for that. Oh, is that like the built-in functionality? Jonas is maintaining that. Cool. Become an Emacs guru. What's that about? 
teaches to use Emacs properly. Okay. What does properly mean? Interactively manipulate Windows. Some of these things are just like uh, packaged up versions of things that, uh, now this is def definitely not, but uh, things that are built into Emacs, I think. Hey, Mjolnir. Sandra says, why are the videos on your channel not sorted after date? I don't know. Hmm. Um, some of the videos, I haven't posted a new actual video in quite a while, so you're probably just seeing that the fact that there's not been a new posted video. There's live streams. I've been live streaming pretty consistently, but videos, not so much. Okay. Let's, let's get through this because uh, we don't want to just be looking at me looking at the screen the whole time. Just looking if there's anything that jumps out at me that seems pretty useful. Generic session manager. I mean, that seems something worth taking a look at. No problems, Sandre. Don't worry. Or Sundre. Not sure how you might pronounce your name. Here I go again with the pronunciation. Um, why is this line here? Okay. Oh, interesting. Yeah, there's the right good mode that uh, Jeff su suggested. Uh, named rooms for work without irrelevant distracting buffers. We'll take a look at that one and see if it's any different than other ones we've seen. All right, so we've got a, a set of packages here that we can kind of cut through and take a look at. <clears throat> Mjolnir says, is Greece on daylight savings time? Not yet. That's the reason why we're not really synced up with the time in the U.S. right now. All right. Magna says, when I find a proper non-slave job, you'll be my first donation. Keep up the great work. Thank you. I appreciate that. I look too great cutter. Okay. So what's this uh, session manager package all about? Facilities for session management and interactive session association with current contexts. See the readme. Uh, session are commonly composed of one or more physical processes. Yeah, this sounds complicated. User interface and a system interface consisting of a few generics and API functions. I mean, it sounds like it might be interesting, but um, I generally prefer not to use things that are trying to like reach into my um, Emacs session too much because they inevitably will cause problems. I don't know that this package would, but just, you know, in my experience, things tend to do that. So we can we can save that one for later in case it's interesting. Uh, first name says, right good mode is dumb. Well, let's see about that, huh? To find common writing problems. Well, that sounds like it might be actually pretty useful because I know that I have problems with writing. All right. So it can find weasel words, passive voice, and duplicate words. Um, I wonder if it needs any external programs to do this or if it's just, you know, internal stuff. All right, so let's give that one a shot, huh? So if I load up a package, well, no, let's use straight for this. Straight, use package, because I haven't gotten rid of straight yet. Uh, write good mode. Now, why is there a right good and a right good mode? What's wrong with passive voice? Well, it just depends, I guess. I mean, for professional writing, maybe you don't want to use it, but it's all up to t personal taste, I suppose. It's right, uh, right good. I can't write good right now. 
So does it tell me anything about my current writing? No. Uh, so what are some examples of weasel words? Because I'm not exactly sure. Yes. Ah. Fairly. This text is fairly bad. Uh-oh. Gave us a little marker there. Consider removing or replacing. You see down in the, the echo area that it actually makes a suggestion there. The things that I uh, I try out, I'll try to put the links in for uh, for other people to try out too. This can be pretty useful if you do a lot of writing in Emacs and you want to make sure that you're not falling into some uh, uh, some general traps. Uh, Jeff says, uh, some people say that System Crafters is pretty boring. It's not finding that one though. Must mean that it's uh, true. So why isn't it finding that? Hey Alejandro. Uh, okay, so there's a weasel words list. Weasel words. Ugh. I got some problems with uh, helpful mode recently after going to Emacs 25, uh, 29. Not rocket science. So this is the cheat sheet for what it's gonna tell you is, is terrible about your, your wording. What, what, what was the word that uh, Trump liked to use? I don't see it in this list and, and I'm not remembering it at the moment. Fabulous. They should have fabulous in this list. Does weasel mean redundant? I think weasel means it's like either unnecessary or um, uh, it, it implies things are more true than they are or, or better than they are maybe. Okay, so it found that one. Yo, know, China? Okay, yeah. He did say that a lot. That's true. All right, so. I'm not bringing up politics in the channel, people. I'm just thinking of a word that is just used with virtually no meaning other than just to, to provide extra color to the language. Okay. So yeah, right good mode, that seems pretty useful, but we're not gonna spend any more time on that because, you know, we saw it. So what else, workroom. Um, let's take a look at what that is. Named rooms for work. I mean, there's a number of uh, projects like this also, like perspective.el, uh, what was the one I was using recently? Tab spaces, uh, things like that. So it's another one in that uh, the class of packages. Basically to set up a list of buffers that's, um, unique to a project. It has its own set of views. This is sounding more like a perspective for sure. Views are just named window configurations. They allow you to switch to another window configuration without losing your well-planned window setup. All right, can I turn this off after I turn it on? Let's try it. Straight use package, uh, workroom, all right. Case says, weasel words are equivocal words used to deprive a statement of its force or to evade a direct commitment. Well, that sounds like most of the things that I say in my uh, day job. Let's see. Case is the right person to ask about this because he's a professional writer. Um, okay, I put in the uh, workroom package. Let me make sure I copy the link for this one. Workroom. Politicians, yes. Don't we all love politicians? So there's always a workroom named master, uh, workroom switch, workroom switch view, workroom mode. All right, got to turn it on. Workroom um, switch. Switch to project. Okay, that's not bad. Now I'm in the System Crafters workroom, and if I open the buffer list, it does seem to be restricting things to um, stuff from this project, which is good. 
workroom switch switch to master and then uh, I'm back to my original list but let, let me go to some stuff in another project perhaps in fact um, let's see which uh, which is a good one uh, crafted Emacs how about that so let's just jump into this I have a manifest file in here hmm I'll say no on that all right, so we'll open this file. Ugh. All right, buffer env is gonna give me a uh, heartburn here. Okay, so workroom. Uh, switch to project workroom, craft at Emacs. I mean, it makes it pretty easy to set that up. But if I'm in that workroom, but there's a lot of dear ed buffers here that don't relate. Whoops. Stop. All right. Man, buffer env is uh, is really winning today. Buffer env mode. I can't turn it off. That's that's wonderful. Okay. Ben Watt says Case is also a programmer. Yes, I, I'm just saying what his profession is. Case is also a programmer. And you, and Case, if you want to drop your link to all the packages and other tools that you've written, please do that. I don't want to take away your uh, credibility as a programmer. All right. Okay, so do I need to use like a workroom switch to buffer? Uh, okay, so probably I needed to be doing that. This init.el file, oh, okay, okay, okay. So yeah, it's another one of these situations where you have to rebind your um, buffer switching key binding to use the buffer switching, yeah. I mean, obviously right here, this is the, the key to that. So another package where you have to sort of rebind your setup to make it work the way that you want it to. Codeberg ACDW, is everything mirrored there? Because I know you have your own other place too. There you go, 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 go check out all of Case's code here. First name says, I want a package that stops you from writing uh, though at the end of your sentences. Well, probably you could make that yourself pretty easily. I'm not gonna prove that right now because uh, I don't think anybody wants to see me writing more Emacs Lisp code at the moment. Wait, so let's see. Treeset parser manager. Let's see if Case has any packages we need to try right now, huh? Run functions at dawn and dusk in Emacs. That's pretty useful. SpongeBob case. Obviously, we need to use that one. I think I need to turn that on for all my presentations. Automatically changes the cursor. Ah, yeah, that one is pretty cool. Load machine dependent settings in Emacs. If you like to have your Emacs config customized per machine, you might want to try this one. This is a uh, a good idea. I do this kind of thing in my own config, but I just do it in a hacky way. Um, Case, I think it'd be a good idea to have an example of using this in the readme, but that's just my opinion. Oh, Codeberg is, is telling us this has invisible Unicode characters that may be processed differently. I think that they're concerned about uh, Case being a hacker and uh, loading bad Unicode characters into our machine. It's right here somewhere, right above this function. It must be the line feed character. So Code, Code, Codeberg does not like line feed characters, which are very common in Emacs list packages. So sorry, Codeberg. Uh, Tim says, can you add things to write good mode? That's a great uh, suggestion, actually. So you could actually just say, and actually should be a weasel word because I just said it four times. Describe variable. Weasel words is actually in here. No, it should be, but you could definitely put uh, though in this list and it would mark it. So if you want to do that, right good mode is uh, what you need. <laughs> Alejandro says that Case is also a black hat hacker. Okay, anyway, let me, let me uh, put that link in the show notes as well. All 
Okay, so machine.el, because I think that would be a useful package for somebody to try out. And let me see if I can come up with an example of this. I probably can't. Yeah, it's not in any repo. You'd probably have to use a straight or even a package VC to pull this in. Did I see that here? Straight, yeah, right there. It was right under my nose. Here we go. So I can pull this package in using straight use package. I'll pop over to, well, I can do it here. Instead of a straight uh, scratch buffer, just so that this is in the show notes. Oh. And why are you unhappy? Um, what? Is my straight like really out of date and there's a bug or something? It doesn't like, uh, why does it think it's nil? Let's go to this code. String match repo. Repo. Straight with plist recipe repo. Is, do I need to change that URL to repo? Yeah, is .el valid, I wonder? It should be because there's plenty of uh, repos in .el. Huh, okay, so that worked. I, I changed URL to repo, so. Hmm, I'm not signed in here. If I was, I would go and uh, submit a pull request to cases package. Okay, now that it's loaded, let me take a look at the actual code. In fact, let's say find library machine. Default face font, face height. Okay, these are things that may be customizable per machine, I guess. Machine files, a list of files to load for machine specific configuration. What comes at the end of this file? Machine settings load, load per machine settings from machine files. There's a variable called machine files. Let's require machine. Hold on now, describe machine files. All right, so it's an empty list. Sorry, wrong. Uh, each sub list of machine files examined file by, by file, okay. Nice looking code here. Did I just type something? And yeah, I put an error in the code, apparently. Um, system name. Yes, it seems like it's just that list, the machine files list. No, you. I could change the code to make it look not nice if you want. Okay. So it looks like the machine files list, maybe it's like a Emacs list uh, files. And it says, each sublist of machine files examined file by file. The first file found in each list will be loaded. Interesting. Is there a way to say plist of the current machine's attributes? It has an example. Did I miss that? Ah. Uh. Machine settings load, we'll look for the following files. Oh, cool, okay, I like that. So basically it's it's based on the files that you have in your configuration. So in this case, uh, this machine is called Phantom, I suppose. Uh, system name, yeah, Phantom. 
and they would look for a phantom.el file or even the username or the type of system. That's cool. And I think you can mix and match. No, it says the first one, right? Ah, first, first, if I can type. The first file found in each list will be loaded. So each sublist of machine files is examined file by file. I guess you have to put them in the list first. Oh, and Kay says uh, his config repo is another example. We'll, we'll take a quick look at that and then we'll uh, bounce on to another package. Not here, probably. Doesn't like it. Let me check the... Just check the host name using a switch. That's that's basically what I do. All right, anyway, let's get back to it. So definitely check out machine.el, it seems pretty cool. Uh, SpongeBob case, I mean, this kind of uh, <laughs> goes without saying what this is for, if you know the meme. We don't really need to install that to try it out. Okay. Uh, we'll try eat in a minute, I think. Dev help, what's this all about? I think that uh, it must be, you know, 80% of the packages on non-GNU Elpo were written by Akib. Just for my, you know, fully scientific uh, data sampling here. Okay. I don't know if I have any files like this, so if you use something that has dev help packages, then maybe it would be useful to you. Not so much for me. Another one by Akib. I'm telling you, I have a very scientific process here to find that uh, Akib basically owns Nanganu uh, Elpa. Corfu uses child frames to display candidates. This makes Corfu uh, unusable on terminal. The package replaces that with pop up, pop on, which works everywhere. Huh. I have had issues with Corfu in the terminal, so this might be useful. Prot wrote a SpongeBob case package? I did not know that. Oh, okay. So case is saying uh, git.acdw.net slash git. No, slash emacs. Tree, machines. Here we are. Larry, cool. I'm, I can hear the theme song right now. All right, so Windows NT, so that's cool. But basically just files that are uh, necessary per system. And then init.el, let's see, machines, machine. So that's pulling that package in, machine settings load. So nothing is being configured here apparently. That I can see, unless it's uh, happening in early init. Nope. Yeah. Anyway, 60% 60, 60 of the time, you're right all the time. Well, that's right. Um. Okay, let, let me see if I can repro uh, the Corfu issue or issues that we might have seen. In fact, where has it been worse? So is Corfu going to pop up? Okay, actually Corfu's busted at the moment, which is great. Hmm. Well, that's weird. I haven't had problems with Corfu in uh, in e shell for a while. Let's uh, look at something else. Maybe later we'll take a look at that again. So workroom we saw. Uh, session manager. I'm not gonna do that one. So ffmpeg utils. Um, this one will be hard to demo, but I just want to take a look at it really quick because I think um, I think I know where this came from. Homepage. No, this is not the one I thought of. Someone else's package. 
So it's a package for cutting a video or a media clip based on region selected start and end timestamps. So basically if you write some timestamps in a file, it will cut that into a video, which is probably pretty useful. And Star Diviner, that name is familiar. I think that they've commented on videos on the channel before. Yeah, I definitely want to do some kind of video editing stuff with Emacs or somewhere else at some point, but... Uh, Mehdi says, do you know when Emacs 29 is going to be released? I don't know what the latest is on that. If anybody else knows, uh, certainly uh, say so. Uh, Jeff says th the date hasn't been published yet. Probably not. Um, it, it usually takes up to about six months after they cut the, the uh, release branch before you see an actual release. So it may take a little while. And um, since they have... Tree sitter and eglot being added and a use package being added by default, they probably have to do a lot of testing just to make sure everything's okay. So uh, I imagine that, you know, increases the amount of time. Uh, Pratik says, when I backspace while Corfu is showing the completions, it doesn't refresh the completion menu. That does happen sometimes, that's right. Strix says, the data is not finalized, but it's going to be in spring as far as I know. And Ethernet says sometimes in spring, sometime in spring. Cool. I'm looking forward to that. There's definitely some bugs that need to be worked out, though, in packages like Helpful. Helpful has a bug that's super annoying. And it's the one that I keep hitting when I use Control HV because I have that bound to Helpful describe variable. It keeps giving me this unexpected error whilst reading some file at position some position. Because of this uh, read symbol positions list function, I think that that got removed or something. Uh, something about Emacs 29 changed that, so. Uh, unhelpful, Benoit says. Uh, Benoit also says, native comp by default? I don't know. I don't know if that's if they're going to do that. I mean, honestly, they should because it's been working fine. I haven't had any problems with native comp other than maybe, like, you have to go delete some stale uh, compilation files at some point, but other than that, I haven't had any trouble. Alejandro said he had the same error with Helpful, so he deactivated it. Yeah, I probably should do that. Helpful is nice. I mean, like the the, the changes that it does to um, the help buffers is useful, but it's not useful whenever it uh, gives you an error every time you try to get description of something. So probably should take it out. Simulate user sessions. Write scripts using a simple data as code DSL to simulate user sessions. Applications include automating screencasts and end-to-end -end testing. That could be useful for people who want to make uh, tutorial videos. Is there a website? What's it got on it? Uh, this is, looks like a, uh, what you call it? Uh, can't remember the name of this package. Drives it from the point of view of the user. Automating screencasts. That's nice. So you can basically use this Cinema thing to uh, to record a terminal-based Emacs session playing back one of these things, which is pretty cool. That's nice. Could be used for end-to-end -end testing for packages. That's also nice. Cool. I mean, that's a, that's a nice package. I don't think we'll try it out necessarily, unless it's easy. Developer preview, low-level API only. Currently used in run command. Oh, there's another package that uses it. Efficient and ergonomic external command invocation. Hmm. Uh, okay. Okay, I see. Here's an example of uh, that uh, demo thing in process. The director package, I'm saying. Create Rust project. I see, okay. So 
So it's like a way to add new commands that just launch shell commands or something. I mean, it's not a bad idea. I mean, I guess you could say, like, this is a cleaner way to configure tasks you might want to execute on the shell. Um, but at the same time, you can just define interactive functions that run start shell. So... Uh, Zeljo says, uh, anything new regarding uh, Greet D? No, I, I decided not to uh, continue with that because uh, it was clear from the, the numbers that people weren't very interested. So um, I, I need to get back to making the guide that I mentioned. I haven't started that yet, but it, maybe when I'm out of town this weekend, I'll have some time to do that. Okay, says make file. Yeah. TechDuck says, I want to say thank you. Looking into new editors and came across Emacs again. Want to learn about it more. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. I've never been more excited about a piece of software. Yeah. Well, you know, it is pretty exciting at first whenever you realize that it's like an endless rabbit hole of things to, uh, to learn and do. And it basically stays that way. Of course, I don't really mess around with my own Emacs very much anymore because things are pretty settled in my configuration. Alejandro says, I was interested in Greet D, but not the most, I'm not the most normal person though. Well, I mean, I don't think you could say that the people who watch this channel are normal people in the conventional definition, but uh, I think there's levels to normalcy <laughs> in this channel and the, the people who like geeks are on the smaller end of the spectrum of the, uh, the normal people who watch this stuff. Jeff says, I'm normal. Yes, you're definitely normal. And I don't mean normal in a bad way when I'm saying anything about anyone. <laughs> okay, so Case, are you offended because you're you're normal or you're not normal or you're not abnormal enough? Like what what are we what are we offended by now? Or is it that others are not normal? Uh, I don't know. I shouldn't be making uh, claims like that because it just gets uh, misunderstood. I'm not saying it's a good thing to be all interested in geeks. All right, let me let me rephrase that. I'm not saying that I prefer the people who are inter interested in geeks. I'm just saying that it's a it's a a minority of the minority on this channel. I think. All right, uh, let's get back to the list here. I got lost in this one a little bit. Right, it's kind of cool though. People might be interested to uh, learn about this package. So I'll, I'll put the run command one in there and maybe the director one. Uh, let's see, run command and director. Let's throw the links in. Alejandro says politics, weasel words, please, yes. I know what I did. I don't know what I did. I'm just the one talking here. I'm just saying whatever comes to my brain. All right, so Emacs director. There we go. Let's take that one and just drop it in here too. I, sh I should press VW like a good Vimmer here. Whoa, that's not what I expected though. VB, B, no, whatever. Let's stop screwing around. All right, Beacon. I think Beacon's pretty well known, right? Emacs Beacon. Mongoose. What are we talking about? I like the fall as your cursor around so you don't lose it. Let's see if this actually works for me. Yeah, it kind of looks cool. I've seen it before. VLW. Thank you. Uh, okay. 
this is probably in uh, the listing. So straight use package uh, beacon. Cloning beacon. Beacon mode. Okay. Beacon blink. Okay, so that worked, but why is it not? Whenever the window scrolls, okay. Cool. So basically when you scroll the window, it sort of like flashes this little gradient at the current line so that you kind of see where the cursor is. I mean, that might be useful, but personally, I don't really need it. That doesn't mean other people don't uh, like it. So we'll throw that in. Uh, Olivetti or Olivetti. Who knows? Isn't that the name of one of the people from uh, Queens of the Stone Age? Nick Olivetti. Probably not why the package is named Olivetti. All right, so uh, we have a shining reference here in the screenshot, which is great. Let's you know that uh, using Emacs could never have any negative effects on your mental health, for sure. All right, so Olivetti. Straight use package, Olivetti. <coughs> so let's go. Uh, let me get out of uh, presentation mode here. What? Start panel? Yeah, okay, fine. Org present. No, org present quit. Jeez. Describe variable org present hook. Quit hook. All right. I gotta go fix that function. Sorry, now, now I'm fighting with my own configuration here. That's great. Great use of our time. Dot files, uh, Emacs modules present. Quit hook. Let's get rid of the start panel function because those don't exist anymore. Now, can I quit? Thank you. Oh, what just happened? Come on now. It's quit. Okay, fine. Um, let's turn off uh, visual fill column mode. Okay, so now we're back to normal sort of spacing. And uh, I'm going to run uh, Olivetti mode. Okay, so basically just squeezes the buffer again in the same way that visual fill mode did. Does it do anything else? Set a desired text body width. Uh, you can interactively change the body width with Control C and the. Okay, I see. So you can basically squeeze it or unsqueeze it, whatever that word might be. The key binding. Let's see. You can use a style variable. Hold on. Olivetti style to use margins, fringes, and both, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Okay, fine. Remember the state of visual line mode. Fine. Okay, so that that could be useful, but I still think that uh, visual line mode is um, good for that because it's it doesn't do other things. It just does one thing, and then you can combine it with other packages. I tend to like the packages that are more composable with others. Hey now, what did I just do? There we go. Uh, all right, let's check out uh, uh, Protisilaus Emacs packages. All right, let me check. What did I miss here? Org modern. I'm actually using org, org modern in this config right now, so we can uh, we can check that out too. Big Edie says beacon is particularly nice when you switch windows. That could be true. Alejandro says org modern is pretty, but sometimes it hides something I wouldn't like to. Tables are dot 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 questionable. Yeah, the table stuff doesn't line up for me perfectly some of the time. 
Ah, interesting. Kimmy says, uh, trivia, Olivetti made compact PCs in the 80s. Had to be a gorilla to, carry, gorilla to carry them around. Yeah, any of the portable computers in the 80s were like uh, briefcases or worse than brief, briefcases or like bricks. Might as well be just a box containing uh, cinder blocks, I guess. I was never fortunate enough to have one of those things. Uh, Benoit says org appear breaks with org modern. Huh. Well, I have both on, but it doesn't. Uh... Where does it say it's February? Gun says, why is it February in Greek? I don't know. What? Anyway, uh, Dana Monoid says, are you on Discord or Matrix now? I mean, there is a Discord. People are there. I don't really spend much time there. Uh, but we do spend time on IRC. So on Libra Chat IRC, go to System Crappers channel. Okay. Uh, all right, let's get back to this. Uh, my packages. So where is the listing? Okay, so denote modus themes. The, we should maybe check these out. I don't I haven't really looked at them yet. Uh, the the in Greek this would be ev, but I guess these accents probably make it f. So mm. standard themes, uh, frame oriented Emacs workflow. We'll check that one out. Ah, Fontaine. I think that's the one I was thinking of. So it's another package along the same lines as uh, Olivetti. Uh, Fontaine. Actually, this is not exactly the same, is it? Does it do the... Um, this is for font configs. So that's not right. Okay. Ah, Logos. It's also a little bit different too. This ha does something else. I think this, this is what he uses for his presentations. Uh, getting a couple uh, comments in the chat that the EF themes are, uh, are very nice. Uh, EF themes are much less configurable, but I think there's that's fine because there's more of them that have different styles. Okay, so center the buffer in the window. Um, sample config, let's just try a sample config here. I'll try to straight use package uh, logos. There we go. Also, let me do this to logos. A combination of logos plus Fontaine could give you a similar Vibe is what I have in my presentations, I think. So um, let me see here. Let's just see what this default config does. Oh, it mentions Olivetti. That's interesting. Does it use it? Hide fringe, hide mode line. Narrow to region, forward page, back page. Haha, uh -huh. okay, cool. And then there's a focus mode. So what if I say uh, logos focus mode? Okay, so it doesn't do anything by default, probably because I haven't configured anything. Ah. Outlines are pages. Outlines instead of page breaks. Okay, so that probably is what I want because... Um, Default value for outlines, cool. Let me just, I hate using a mouse. So logos config, EL. All right, so require logos, logis, yeah, sure. And then,
there's a few things here. Now, um, I don't know. Let's let's take a look at what these variables say. If non-nil, center buffer in its window with the Olivetti package. Okay, so it basically builds on top of that. So I could say T on that. What does the scroll lock do? Use scroll lock mode. I don't know what scroll lock mode does. Okay. Uh, buffer read only. Hmm. I don't. If non nil, make the buffer read only. Okay. Um, it, when non nil, use variable pitch mode where appropriate. I'll say true on that. Uh, hide fringe, buffer boundaries. What is a buffer boundary in this case? Ah, I don't know. Anyway, let me uh, run that really quick then. And then logos focus mode. Doesn't seem to do anything. Um, visual fill column mode. Uh, Olivetti mode. Why is it still squeezed though? Okay, there we go. Now. Did I? Wow, okay. I don't know what's happening. I think it turned off um, variable pitch mode, which I don't want. Huh, okay. So, it's not hiding the sections. Maybe that doesn't matter too much. What does it say? Automatically reveal org or outline subtree. Page motion hook. Yeah, anyway. I'm not smart enough to figure that out right now. But uh, definitely worth taking a look at if you want to have um, a package that does the things that it does. I mean, for me, if you want to have a presentation sort of like what I have, you can check out the video that I made, The Secrets of My Presentation Style, because I'm using org present plus uh, visual fill column mode and some other custom stuff for setting fonts. So that's generally how things work. Uh, what is it? Variable width. Pitch, pitch mode. Yes, let's do that again. Org present. All right, we're back. Let's take this out too. <laughs> All right. Hey, all right. Okay, so we also talked about the frame. Isolate Emacs buffers per frame. So this is another package in the realm of packages to isolate your buffer list based on uh, Benoit says visual fill Collins mode, yeah. I probably would have said something like that. And uh, Peter says, I think maybe scroll lock mode might fix your uh, like to the screen so you're always at the center of the screen. Oh, okay, interesting. That's cool. So uh, anyway, another another package that isolates your buffers to either a fr frame or a window or a workspace, quote unquote. So this is doing it on a per frame basis, which, you know, if you're not using EXWM and you have a window manager, like let's say uh, Sway or i3, which can tab windows, then you can use that as another way to have like a tab Emacs experience, I suppose. So let's see, features of be frame mode. And let me copy the link to that actually and put it in here. Frame-oriented Emacs workflow where each frame has access to the list of buffers visited therein. In the interest of brevity, we call the buffers that belong to the frames beframed. Uh, beframing is achieved in three main ways. Uh, calling beframe switch buffer instead of switch to buffer. Uh, enabling the global minor mode. Ah, that's nice. So this is actually a better thing. If you turn on the global minor mode beframe mode, then it automatically updates these uh, built-in buffer switching commands to... Uh, use only the um, buffers for that frame. And there's a buffer menu that produces a de dedicated buffer with a list of buffers for the current frame, okay? So let's uh, load that one up real quick. So straight use package, uh, be frame. Oh, it's not here. Maybe I need to uh, straight uh, repo, pull recipe repositories. Who knows how long that's gonna take, but. Yeah, I, I don't think it froze, thank, thankfully. 
So you might need to refresh Alejandro. Of course, maybe Alejandro didn't see me say that. Luckily, my internet problems, well, I probably shouldn't say anything because I don't want to tempt the gods, but uh, my internet problems have been resolved since the uh, the work they did last week. Now, let me just tell you uh, what they did, my, my ISP. So whenever this house was built, um, apparently they set up the wiring from the telephone pole to the house in an old style way, which is wrap the, the cord for the telephone pole about, I don't know, 30 times around the telephone pole, then string it over to the pole that's outside of my house and wrap it another 30 times. So uh, basically I've got an incredibly long strip of uh, telephone wire going from the telephone pole to my house for no reason other than the fact that they just wanted the wire to stay on the pole. So uh, that might actually account for a lot of the internet problems out problems I was having recently. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, so they went and replaced it. And now they've got like just a single loop with some things on there to keep the, the wire safe. So hopefully that improves uh, the situation. And so far the stream is remarkably stable. So hopefully that fixed it. They also told me I might be able to get fiber to the curb, which would be cool if that's possible. Okay, so I've updated the re repos. Let's check out this again, the frame. Okay, so this time it worked. Cool. Magnetic coils, yes, yeah, not good stuff, not good stuff. I think uh, I probably was causing, you know, a lot of trouble in the area with that. All right, so beframe um, mode, beframe mode. So if I create a new frame, make frame, mm, that number P thing is something about my configuration at the moment. I don't remember what it was. What did I have to do to fix that? Well, let's turn on debug uh, on error mode, make frame. All right. Oh, right, okay. I got the alpha background screwed up. I apparently haven't updated this config recently. Dot files, dot emacs, dot d, modules, core, alpha, background. Yeah, it's right here. That should be a cons pair. And actually, I probably should update this default frame A list. Describe variable. I got to take that out. Hey, what? The value is shown below. Where is it? There we go. Okay, cool. So now I need to go in. Uh, monkey patch. What is it? Uh, default frame A list. No. These are the lovely things you have to do as a as an Emacs user. Okay, so I'm gonna go um, delete. That probably wasn't necessary, was it? No, it is necessary. I'll delete this line. Okay, now we should be fixed. So let's say make frame. Boom. All right. And what's in this list? Well, uh, the DW core file for now. Okay, it's here too. But if I go into this buffer and start opening up other stuff in my dot files repo, dot files, emacs, modules, dev, let's say. And also I can go to, I don't know, interface, org. All right, so I have these buffers up, but I'm not seeing buffers from the other frame. So that's kind of nice, dev. Yeah, it actually works. Wait. It didn't work, but maybe because that buffer, sorry, that frame was alive before. Let's try it again, make frame. Yeah, so dwcore.el, if in this buffer, if I were to open something else like DW social, let's check the previous window, social, yeah, it's not there. If I go to the first one, it probably is there because it doesn't respect, where am I at, social.
my highlighting does not uh, make it clear to me which one I'm looking at. Anyway, so um, you can see here, I have three different tabs here uh, in Sway because there's three different frames for Emacs and they do have their own isolated buffer list. So to be honest with you, I might actually start using this because, um, you know, tab bar mode's great and everything, but now that I have a bar, I don't need this status line anymore. And uh, having separate windows might actually be useful because you just kind of close the window out when you're done with it. So that's a good possibility. I might actually put that in my config for a while and see how it goes. But uh, yeah, it's, the frame just does the job, it seems, without uh, any headache. So I like that. And sort of by, by definition, you have separate uh, window configurations because they're separate frames, which makes sense. So yeah, uh, definitely give a frame a look because it seems cool. I think I copied that one already into the show notes. Yeah, I did. Yo, okay, let's get it out of there. All right, so get time machine. I think we have some other things here we should look at too, but oh, before we jump away, I want to check out this uh, theme set really quick. <laughs> Peter says, maybe you will miss the electromagnetism. Yeah, well, I don't really want that, though. And uh, first name says, uh, isn't fiber expensive? Yes, but, you know, for a person like me who's trying to actually do streaming and whatnot, it would be fairly useful, I think. Ah, Benoit raises a good point. Not enough power to cause pro problems for other people, but anything including power lines would get received on that cable. That could explain some things. So yeah, there's there's fiber to the junction box, but there's definitely not fiber to the house. All right. So, um, though, yes. I say though a lot. So uh, I am one of the people who could benefit from... Um, something that checks that word though. There's a few words I use way too many times. I'm sure that uh, someone will have a super cut of that one day. I'm not I'm not actually in encouraging someone to do that because it'll be horrifying. Uh, okay, so EF themes, EF themes. So straight use package, EF themes. All right. Load theme, EF, there's a lot of them it seems. I don't know if we wanna go through all these. Let me export this list. Uh, why is, why is Embark not working? Hello, Embark. Whatever. Anyway, EF, bio. Yeah, this is probably not going to work very well because uh, we need to clear the theme out. Someone said try autumn. Davy will mode. Okay. Um, The bleed through might be causing a problem here. What's that variable that we just saw? There is set frame parameter. Let's temporarily set this to uh, 100 so we're not seeing the background. Load theme nil. Load theme nil. Does that work? No. Isn't there a way to, oh, EF themes toggle? Okay, I don't know if it will actually clear out things so that it uh, sets the theme up right. Invalid face underline? Does that not exist in general in Emacs? The hell? Hello to uh, uh, Juan Pablo. I guess your name is Juan Pablo. I'm sorry if I'm making wrong assumptions here. Okay, EF themes. Ah, okay, I think that was a problem. Dark. What's, what's the deal with the... 
I'm very confused now. What's the deal with the underline thing? Consult theme might be able to fix it. Oh, okay. Well, let's see. Uh, EF dark. No. Okay. I'm going to close out this Emacs, and thankfully, we don't have to worry about killing the stream because of uh, the magic of multiple computers and not using EXWM anymore. The St. Patrick's Day theme? Yeah. What? Are we there yet? Or did it already happen? I'm not in the United States right now, so obviously uh, I'm not thinking about what the holidays are. EF themes. All right, I got to put that back in. Uh, straight use package. EF themes. Okay. EF themes. Select. EF dark. All right, so that looks a lot like um, modus themes, right? Disable theme. Cool, cool, cool. Ashra says, consult theme will show previews while you hover over the names. Yeah, I don't like that, though, because it, it's really disruptive. But maybe it's faster. Let's just do that. Consult theme, EF dash. Bio. Day. Ouch. My eyes. Frost. Night's kind of nice. I should probably have a buffer with uh, code in it, though, so we can see something uh, interesting to look at. Uh, dot Emacs. Modules dev. Okay, so that's got strings and stuff in it. Let's try that. EF dash. Those are some pretty nice looking light themes, I have to say. Autumn has a nice uh, crispness to it. Let me change that alpha though. Core alpha. Come on now. Okay. Let's do it again. Console theme, EF dash. That's kind of interesting. Cypress is a light green, spring, summer, winter. I like that. Purple's nice sometimes. Duo dark, duo light. Kind of a bluish purplish. That one's pretty nice too. Trio light, dark. And now some uh, themes for color blindness, it seems, which are pretty nice looking, despite the fact that they're um, for color blindness. Usually any kind of um, accessibility themes are not so nice to look at, but these are pretty nice. That's pretty cool. I don't know that Autumn is one that I would use, but it's kind of it's kind of soothing, I suppose. Uh, first name says Modus Themes is already perfect. Modus is cool. I I don't use it, but uh, you know it's it's got its coolness. Uh, Ashra says you could probably write some Emacs lift that runs Emacs Q per frame and loads a theme with some lorem ipsum. Yeah, you could, definitely could do that. Yopekli says EF Winter is the best. I think that's one of the light theme ones, isn't it? Mm, oh, okay. It's not it's not the light one. So um let's go back to consult EF. Okay, yeah. Winter is pretty cool. I like that. If I go back and set my uh alpha back to 93. That works for me. Tab bar mode off. It doesn't really fit the system crapper's vibe, but you know, it's got something to it. Alejandro says, is today St. Patrick's? Wow, today is St. Patrick's Day. Interesting. <laughs> Maybe I can contribute EF system with the System Crafters colors. Yeah, I'll just bring over the uh, Doom Pale Knight theme. Because I, apparently I have no uh, creativity to make my own theme for the channel because it's it's already established with that theme. Okay, EF themes, uh, anything else interesting here? What does EF mean? Will you stop using the modus themes? I'm sure he does get that uh, question a lot. For his workflow, accessibility is the most important quality. All right, cool. Yeah, we'll try out eat before we get out of here. 
director we got already. Uh, huh, beef mode. I wanted to figure out what beef is. Apparently, beef is a programming language. Um, beef programming language with extra umami. Multi-paradigm open source programming language with a focus on developer productivity. Uh-huh. And it's supported on uh, Nintendo Switch. Interesting. And it looks like uh, C Sharp. Why? Why would we do this to ourselves? I mean, is it not just C Sharp or is it like some kind of mixture between C Sharp and Java? Ben Moss says, you compile beef into burger byte code. And he said byte with B-I-T-E, which is definitely uh, right for the pun, for sure. Ben Moss says, didn't you create some sort of theme that was bright pink the day of the electric mode? Um, I definitely did the Emacs from hell configuration, which was horrible. <laughs> that was pretty cool, though. Theopeklu says, I just insulted so many sharp minds. I'm not saying anything that bad about C-sharp. It's a fine language, but uh, I've, I wrote way too much C-sharp in, in an earlier phase of my life. So now I'm just, you know, not so interested. All right, GPT. All right, this is by someone else. Anton. Allows interacting with various GPT and Dolly language models directly in Emacs. Well, I'm guessing you have to have an open API or open AI, open API, open AI account and an API key, which I don't have handy at the moment. I have an open AI account, but uh, I don't know if I can even access the API because I don't pay for it. So that seems kind of interesting. Um, if you want to interact with uh, the latest AI stuff. I'll tell you what, though. Um, I've got some pretty impressive results out of asking programming questions to the Bing chatbot, which apparently is using GPT-4. Um, I asked it two things the other day. One was, um, how do I render a textured quad with the Sokol graphics library? And Sokol is kind of... Um, what would I say, obscure, a little bit obscure. But it was able to give me a working example, which is pretty interesting. Also, I asked it how to, what did I say? How do you implement like a dissolve effect in OpenGL shaders? And it actually gave me an example for that too. Probably it's just scraping for code uh, on websites and building some knowledge of that, but uh, eh. it can work apparently, I guess. Probably this is the same stuff that uh, the co-pilot comes from. And uh, Case says, I hate artificial intelligence so much. Well, you know, it is definitely kind of a gray area in terms of whether it's good or bad. It's definitely overblown right now, though. It's, it's kind of funny how fast Facebook slash Meta completely just flipped and said, well, Metaverse, what's that? And then now they're like, we're building our own uh, large language model. Got to uh, make the investors happy, right? This is why I don't have investors. Peter says, the problem is that the GPT answers with the exact same confidence uh, when it's guessing randomly. Yeah, but that's like... Any programmer that you meet, you ask them, can you do this? Oh, yeah, 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 of course. So I would say that GPT is on par with the confidence level of a programmer. Case says, oh, not because of that, because it's incredibly annoying to hear about. Yeah, for sure. It, it's the thing that everybody wants to talk about now. That's for, that's for certain. TARDIS theme. Okay, nothing that special there. Got to see what this clown theme is all about. No screenshot. Oh, there it is. That's not bad. 
It's uh, kind of like Wombat a little bit, I think. In fact, it looks a lot like Wombat. Maybe just a little bit more polished. SA says, it makes me almost miss Web 3.0 discourse. I don't miss that. I don't miss Web 3.0 discourse. I don't miss NFT discussions or anything related to crypto. That's way too culty, in my opinion. Gun says, why GPT? We have Doctor built in. Well, let's see what Doctor has to say, right? Doctor mode. All right, I am the psychotherapist. Please describe your problems. Um, I can't figure out how to uh, restart my computer. Can you help me? Why do you say I can help you? Because you're a doctor and they don't make someone a doctor unless they're smart, right? Is it because I'm a doctor and they don't do not make someone a doctor unless they're smart, right? That you came to me. So yeah, th this is not uh, on the same level as uh, these AI models. Alejandro says, idea for a hacking stream, a Wayland compositor written in Guile. I mean, I would be interested in doing that. I'm, in, generally, in general, I am interested in making a Wayland compositor using a scheme, but I don't think that people would be interested to watch that. So that's kind of the problem. Maybe you wonder why I would care. Well, I don't know. It's kind of a weird balance here because why do something that people won't be interested in and don't really want to see? Why spend my time doing it? I mean, I could do that off stream for sure. I don't know. It's, it's a weird situation to be in. Jeff says that would be cool. Yeah, it would be fun for sure. And uh, Benoit asks if uh, Alejandro wants a dynamic Tyler. Well, I mean, it could be either, right? I mean, the benefit of having a window manager written in a dynamic programming language, I guess you could say, or specifically a Lisper scheme, is that you could potentially have both. You could have it be a manual Tyler or dynamic Tyler, depending on how you write your code. Dynamic, floating, stack stackable, etc. Benoit says, fun behind the scenes, hard to share on YouTube. It is a bit hard to, to share on YouTube. It's, it's hard to do any kind of difficult programming in a live, st live stream, especially when you don't know exactly what you're gonna do yet, because there's a lot of downtime, a lot of boring stuff. I might make video series about that kind of stuff someday, but uh, I'm not super motivated to do that at the moment. Okay, so uh, let's, let's pull up Pale Knight again. All right, there we go. That looks more like it. Compile multi. What is this? Uh, Multi-target interface to compile. Simpler and more featureful experience. Hmm. I like that it seems to be using um, some extra information in the completions. One or more predicates for the current directory or project is you can be used for for example, to list all the makefile targets of a project. That's neat. I use MetaX compile quite often. <laughs> Benoit says, five hour stream. Why is guys are not working? That sounds about right, actually. Jeff says, there is SCWM. Might be a bit outdated nowadays, though. Yeah, there's also GuileWM, uh, which is only for X. But... I think it was more of like a toolbox, which is sort of the approach I would probably go for if I was to write a window manager, not really have a single way to do things, but more like, you know, you could set up your own way of doing window management in your configuration. So Alejandro says debugging parties, maybe for flux harmonic. Yeah, I want to get back to doing flux harmonic stuff at some point. I started writing some um, game code in C actually because I got so fed up trying to figure out what I wanted to do about uh, which scheme implementation I wanted to use or write. I was just like, you know what? I just want to like work on something. So let me just start writing some C code. Maybe we'll do Let Them uh, Dare in April. We'll see. We'll see how I'm feeling about that time. Uh, all right. Multi-config trigger one, okay. Triggers can be modes, symbols, strings, interpreted as regex. 
I see. So basically, this is a list of um, configurations. And you can say things like, if there's a file called make file in the project folder, then you can set up specific commands that could be executed. And I guess this predicate could effectively be anything, which could be nice. Maybe, maybe you look for like a package.json file for a node project, etc. And it can generate targets, it seems. Multi-make provides a function that will parse out all the targets from a make file and generate actions for them. That could be pretty cool. You can also do it based on mode. And uh, even things like uh, Emacs list mode do byte comp compilation. Uh, it also mentions another package that I should take a look at really quick because I've never heard of it before, Emacs multi-compile. Pretty similar design, it seems. But uh, how long has it been since it's been updated? Oh, 2021. It's not that old. Whoops. That could be interesting, though. I might give that one a try, because uh, I do have the need for something like that. Uh, sites, system crafters, content, live streams, March 17. Okay, here we go. And this was what? Uh, compile multi. Greg Cooter says, it seems like this feature exists somewhere in the depths of Emacs. It might, but I've never seen it, if that's the case. Uh, denote menu. Do I have denote set up here? Yes. But I don't necessarily want to... Uh, show a menu of the stuff in my note folder, so. Oh, it, it, it's self-referential, right. Where is the repository? I think this is, all right. Is this on a uh, source hut? Where is this package? Um, there it is. Okay. So anyway, there's a screenshot here, I think. And uh, if you use Denote, which is a nice package indeed. Wait, I thought there was a screenshot here. It's not in the readme. Um, this is basically a, a buffer that you can pull up that gives you the actual titles titles of all of your uh, denote notes and also the list of tags for all of those. It's just a nicer way to look at them in case you wanted to take a look at that um, with all the timestamps in it. Um, it's not like a mini buffer list so you can find all your files based on title, but you know it, it could effectively function like one if you need a way to find them pretty easily. So something worth trying out, I think, if you uh, use denote and you want to have a nice listing for that. So I'll put that in the show notes too. Okay, someone mentioned the Naga theme Emacs. I don't know if I've seen this before. Screenshot? Okay, that's that's super hackery. That was what was promised and yes, that's uh, definitely the case. It's kind of like we're living in the matrix. But not really for me though. It's a little bit too... Uh, Greenish. I don't want to feel like I'm looking at an IBM PC terminal all day long. Uh, Zeft is comparable. I've never heard of that. Emacs. Uh, interactive Emacs note searching. Hmm. So it doesn't specifically mention uh, denote. Ah, uh, uses Zapien. Okay, that makes sense. 
So basically, it just pulls up uh, Zapien to index all the notes and make them searchable. That's a, not a bad idea. <laughs> Benoit says, that felt like Shrek theme. Yeah, it is kind of like Shrek theme, indeed. All right, let's quickly try out this uh, eat package. Let me see if I can install it uh, straight. Eat. Oh, failed to run git. Why? Straight process. Where is straight process? I'm looking at the, the hidden buffers. Straight process. Does it not like the repo? Let's see. We'll, we'll do it manually. Yikes. Why do I need such a weird um, invocation? Oh. Unknown value for host. Uh, okay. You know what? I'll bet money that uh, I got such an old version of straight on this machine that um, it doesn't recognize Codeberg yet. So let me just drop this in here. Well, well, well. Ah, you know what? I bet um, <clears throat> straight remembers This recipe. <laughs> Emacs mirror, huh? Let's try this. This might not work out, but whatever. Okay, well, that's not gonna work. Is it in Geeks? No. Anyway, worth worth trying out if you wanna have a better terminal experience in eShell, but uh, apparently it's not working for me right now, so your mileage may vary. So, uh, eat. Saw that one, didn't really care too much. You know, this whole meow versus god mode versus boon, etc. thing probably should be another stream. Like, we could talk about different modal editing modes, so that might be useful. Daniel says, is this a streaming thing? I don't think I've seen this many Emacs problems. I don't know. I mean, on any given day of the week, you could see any number of uh, Emacs problems, especially if you're trying to install packages from the outside world. It really just depends on circumstances. Some of the problems are related to my own configuration, and I fixed them. But it really just depends on what it is. Uh, Ramza says, a new package called Puni. That sounds familiar. Is that on GitHub? Ah, apparently. I, I have already looked at this. Structure, navigation, and editing. Aha. Uh -huh. What if I tried this? Ah, yeah, it's like a language agnostic thing. Probably should try it again. Let me drop this in. As a possibility for another time. Benoit says, is eat a POSIX term for uh, e-term? It could be. Alejandro says, most of the problems, like 95% are related to configuration, not Emacs itself. Yes. Daniel says, I find most problems come when people are watching me use Emacs. Everything runs perfectly smooth when I'm on my own. Well, I don't know. It's probably about 50-50 for me. MH Voice says, I watched it for, for what it's worth. I'm guessing you're referring to the um, uh, window manager streaming thing. Should I put up some kind of vote to gauge community interest? I... I, I'm, I have a pretty good barometer for what people are interested in based on just uh, 
view count on a variety of different videos and streams alone. So I, I think I have a pretty good uh, idea of what the interest level will be. Okay, so was there anything else? Get Time Machine. Let's see what that's all about. Walk through, get revisions of a file. Hmm. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh, Hector says, I was using Beacon, but I changed to Prots Pulsar. Yeah, that's another one. That's uh, in that kind of package category. Um, let's copy the link, first of all. And uh, let's go check out the time machine. Okay, so I'm gonna go into my dot files repo because I think that's probably the most interesting place to look at this. Um, let's see. Use uh, meta x get time machine, and then you can use some keys to navigate through the history of a file. Now I don't know exactly how well this is gonna show things here, but let's see. Get time machine. Okay, so I think it has uh, key bindings N and P. So previous historic version, yeah, I probably need to be in Emacs state. Yep, okay. So where was that? Fix alpha background set. Apparently I didn't fix it, did I? All right, so um, next. Okay, so you can see this line here. These these two lines, they changed because that I changed this during a, uh, a commit at some point. If I hit P for previous, you can see sort of the history of, of that file uh, getting broken. Uh, and another change there. I'm hitting P again. Let me turn on um, keycast tab bar mode. There we go. So I'm just going back in, in the history. You can see that whenever I change to sway, this, I changed the alpha background instead of alpha because I'm using the PGTK version of Emacs. So yeah, you can definitely see that things are changing the file, but if you're not looking at the actual lines where things change, it's kind of hard to see. But if um, you want to toggle between two different commits, pressing N and P is pretty nice because you can easily see, like if we watch these, these couple lines right here. Oh, I can't do that. Uh, you can see how things are kind of changing over time to get a sense of, you know, what lines are being changed. So that's kind of nice. Uh, Ethernet says, uh, Magic integration would be nice. I would imagine that there should be something like that. I press Q to get out of that. I think it's probably the right way to do that. Yeah, Q, exit the time machine. Uh, B, run Magic Blame on the currently visited revision. Okay, cool. Let's, let's try that really quick. Um, alpha. So if I say time machine, I can go previous previous, previous, and then B. B, yeah, so you can see the commits here with the magic blame, which is nice. And I'll press Q to get back out of that. Uh, go to revision, go to some number of revisions, uh, show current commit using magic. That's cool, I mean, it's a pretty useful package, it looks like. A lot of committers to this package. That's cool. So yeah, pretty nice. I would definitely use that if I had to, you know, do some walking back through the history of a particular file to see sort of how things evolved over time. It could be pretty useful. Uh, so anyway, I think that's it. I mean, we managed to get through how many packages? Uh, what about 10, maybe, I guess? More or less. So uh, hopefully you found something in that list of packages that is uh, interesting that you might want to give a try. And um, we will probably do another stream at some point soon about this uh, sort of modal editing thing because it might be good to kind of take stock of what's out there. Um, evil mode's great, but there's other ideas on how you could do modal editing and uh, it'd be cool to kind of check out the, the landscape. Osloy says, sounds like it'd be cool to have keys to jump to changes in the current commit. Yeah, there might be keys for that, but um, let's see, magic, blame. 
yeah, there's a magic blame next chunk, but you would have to turn on the blame mode, I think, and then uh, go to the next chunk, but who knows? So anyway, uh, like I said, next week, I will more than likely be on vacation out of town, so I probably won't do a stream. Uh, I'll let you know either way so that you know whether to show up. Um, other than that, though, I hope you all have a great weekend, and uh, leave a note in the comments of the video if you have other packages you want me to try on a future stream, because I'm always interested to try things I haven't heard of yet. And until next time, I'll see you later. Happy hacking. Thanks.